Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, Dr. Nidhi, we are ready. Uh, I have Dr. Nidhi with us today. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have him here. I don't know if you can hear me now. Dr. Nidhi. Yes, you are there. Okay. So uh, we have the pleasure of having Dr. Nidhi here today with us. He will be talking about how to design question papers for the next hour and a half with you. Uh, Dr. Nidhi serves as an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science at Nater Chennai. He also heads the Department of Computer Science here. Uh, in addition to his expertise in computer science, Dr. Nidhi has done a lot of work in teaching and learning and pedagogy, and he has taught several sessions on assessment, designing of question papers, setting out question papers, uh, evaluating the quality of question papers, uh, and other sessions around the same topics. So I'm pretty sure this session will be of great use to everyone who is in the audience. Uh, over to you, Dr. Nidhi. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Ashish. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, participant, next almost one and a half hours, we are going to discuss about uh, how uh, uh, you know we have to set the question paper. Uh, yeah, hope my uh, screen is visible to everybody. My presentation is visible, right? I can see it, yes. Actually, uh, the whole session is on uh, how to set the question paper. You have uh, already undergone the fundamentals of assessment. There is a different kind of assessment like formative assessment, uh, then uh, summative assessment, then uh, you can have a preparative assessment. There are different kind of assessment. What are the kind of questioning we have to do? in the classroom because the word assessment is a very important word particularly the assessment is to improve the learning okay particularly the assessment is to improve the learning so since the assessment is for the improvement of the learning how you how to do an interaction in the classroom with the students so that the improvement will be happen so these are all the fundamentals already you might have undergone Right, there are a question like a probing question, leading question, tunneling question, rhetorical questions, uh, right, inspiring questions. So, how we have to ask those questions in the classroom, those things are fundamentals. Next, we will come to the types of assessment where uh, we are uh, concentrating on testing in the uh, setting the uh, question paper. There are two types of assessment fundamentally. One is called direct assessment, the another one is called indirect assessment. So, what is the direct assessment? Is direct assessment talks about normal test what we are conducting, a standardized test we are conducting. We are conducting so many uh, classroom activities, assignments we are giving, homework we are giving. Then, sometimes we can have a problem oriented teaching learning practice where uh, problem based teaching learning process, uh, uh, process. So, those kind of assessment practices, mini project oriented, all the things are coming under the direct assessment. Indirect assessment is purely on learning experience. Actually, there are two things one is called learning, the second one is called the learning experience. So, what exactly learning is? Learning component, which has to be demonstrated. Whatever learning, it has to be demonstrated. So, whatever that learning experience which need to be described. So, learning and learning experience are very much important for uh, the assessment. Okay. So, uh, what are the different kind of assessment as already I told you? Course embedded assessment, standardized test, portfolio assessment, case studies, class project, internship evaluation, then thesis evaluation, project report evaluation. So, these are all. But mainly as a, a teacher, we are more concentration on these two. One is called setting the standardized question paper. The second one is called the course embedded assessment. Okay, these two are 
very much important for uh, setting the question paper. Setting the question paper. One minute. So uh, these two uh, is really help us to how to set the question paper. So let us see how to set the question paper for force embedded assessment and standardized test. Right? When we talk about you know the dimensions of questioning. So once I wanted to set the standardized question paper, once I wanted to set the question paper or any any activity which I can do for classroom assessments so what are the dimensions of questioning what exactly is questioning you know you write any question in your notebook the question is you can divide as a two part you can divide the question as a two part one part is what ability expected then second part is on what content the ability you are expecting draw the so you are expecting the drawing ability draw the architecture of okay then list so uh, what is the ability you you are looking for recall ability then uh, 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 design so you wanted to uh, get the understanding ability so there are a different abilities according to the bloom's taxonomy revised bloom's revised taxonomy so which ability you are expecting from the uh, student okay so that is what the first component of the question paper the second component of the question paper is on what content that ability you are expected so ultimately when you are talking about dimensions of the question the first that uh, a component is uh, abilities so when i'm looking for a particular ability i wanted to expect the uh, design ability or i'm expecting the problem solving ability normally whenever we are conducting the test it is very much important i have to define the which ability i'm expecting from the particular test because the purpose of the assessment is very much important. We should not conduct the assessment in generic. In generic, if you are conducting the assessment, then you are not in a position to give the constructive feedback. So when that assessment is meaningful, if you are giving the constructive feedback, okay? So constructing constructive feedback, when it is possible, if you are conducting the assessment, which is more purposeful, right? What is the purpose of, suppose sometime, my test is purely for checking the problem solving ability of the students. My assessment is purely on checking the retention ability of the student, that is recall ability of the student. So all my question paper only on the ability of recall. All my question paper, or I can have a part of question that area, part of question another ability so that I can give the feedback to the student as an individualized feedback or as a group feedback, I can give to the student that you are good in problem solving, but you are not good in, uh, you know, uh, recall, recognize or remember ability. You are good in understanding, but you are not good in application ability. So, like you wanted to, uh, you know, inform to the candidates as a feedback, then you must have uh, the purpose of the assessment. So, the purpose of the assessment defined based on the ability, that is a one dimension, right? So, that purpose is, Again, it is on the skill area, that is on the content. So that on the dimension, what we talk about, the skill area completely on the, uh, you know, how they are really applying, the fact and principle, how really they're applying. Then I, I, I wanted to know the ability of the student. Then what is the content or the ability I'm looking for it? Then what kind of a question if I set so that I can find out whether the student is having the knowledge or not whether the student performing or not that i wanted to know so fundamentally the base thing is question item the base thing is what question item i have to set so the question item on a area skill area then that will check the ability of the uh, the student okay that is what is called dimension of questioning dimension of questioning is what is the item question item i am going to set that question items are various kind of items are there so which item will bring the which kind of ability okay so generally a item is you know defined for particular ability but as a subject expert you can 
know define different kind of uh, you know ability for different kind of a person paper but generally there is a guideline for that that we will see that okay uh <clears throat> Actually, uh, this indirect assessment, as already I told you, indirect assessment mainly focus on uh, the survey, which will actually indirect assessment is a complementary component for the direct assessment. Okay, so it is mainly on survey that uh, talks about the learning experience of the student, right? So learning experience is nothing but how really the class is engaged on student ability or the knowledge or the value system rather than direct evidence. But this evidence is complementary evidence for the direct assessment. So the, the 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 integration of direct assessment and indirect assessment together play a major role. So indirect assessment mainly on survey, then exit interview, then external reviewers. Okay, so these are all. So I can conduct the survey end of the session or end of the course. Okay, end of the course that reveals that how really the student enjoyed the uh, content. Okay, and really they are motivated to learn further right then exit interview and focus groups then external reviewers like a internship or whatever the external review what we are conducting uh, these are all the indirect assessment uh, but these are all you know complement one thing we have to understand this is not the different see since i say that there are two types of assessment both are not contradicting so these are all supporting to direct evidences okay that is what very much important so let us see how we have to set the question paper. So before going to set the question paper, we must have an assessment plan. So what exactly the assessment plan is? The first thing is prepare the learning outcome. So when I when I'm going for the assessment plan, first we have to see the learning outcome. So learning outcome is micro level learning outcome we have to prepare. Micro level learning outcome we have to prepare. The micro level learning outcome is uh, for example, in a lesson, you may have a 10 to 15 outcome. Maybe you can have a course outcome. You can have a course outcome, but that course outcome is very minimal. It's a macro level outcome. But that macro level course outcome, I cannot use it directly to set the question paper. So what we have to do, we have to prepare the learning outcome, which is at micro level or concept level, right? So those outcomes are very much important to, to prepare the assessment plan because you see, even you are all understand that you want to develop a specific ability among the student. Is it possible to have a same instructional strategy? Definitely not. For example, you want to develop the application ability. If you want to develop the application ability, then, then your class Delivery strategy should be demonstration. You uh, are simulation method. If you wanted to develop the understanding ability among the students, then you must have a lecture method, lecture come demonstration you have to give, right? You wanted to improve the analyze ability of the student, then the best method is simulation or on-field practice, okay? This, the, you know, there are a different uh, kind of uh, instructional strategies we have to use so that a kind of ability you are looking for among the student will be developed. The same way, the same way, when you are going to set the question paper, the learning outcome emphasize what kind of ability you want to expect in the answer script. That is what already I told you, the first one component, the dimensions of person paper, that ability. So, in each concept, you deliver at a certain level because there is a question paper for UG, there is a question paper for PG, right? There are different level of graduation. You cannot set the question all at all in the analyze level or higher level or in the completely in the application. So, your question paper for UG means your question paper must satisfy the level of course outcome. Your course outcome level itself is understand, then all your questions mostly in understanding level, maybe a little bit application level. Your course outcome is in the application level, then your question from the remember to application level. It should not go to analyze level. Suppose your course outcome is it's purely on understanding level, all the course outcomes are purely on the understanding level, then you can, cannot go beyond you know, a little bit application, analysis, all the things you cannot go. 
so such a way when you are talking about the question paper setting you have to look into the course outcome so the course outcome define what level you have to set that is a one part and the course outcomes are very minimum okay very very minimum that is a, normally what happened uh, all the institutions all the departments they are you know the faculty members defining the course outcome maybe 4 to 6 right so once you have a 4 to 6 outcomes once you have a 4 to 6 outcomes then these outcomes give overall view of the course. It won't give the clarity on exactly the individual lessons. So you want to bring the individual lessons as uh, individual lessons. So by the way, you have to uh, you know, uh, bring the assessment plan. You have to bring the assessment plan. So the assessment plan consisting of the assessment method, then target outcomes, then the third one is what is called collection of information for subsequent uh, actions. Okay. So these are all uh, what is called uh, we have a the assessment plan table. So here. This is the attain. So you see, once you first you have a what is called preparation of learning outcome. What is the purpose of preparation of the learning outcome? As already I told you, the learning outcome is converted as a questions in the question paper. That you have to understand. The learning outcome only, the micro level learning outcome. Suppose you have a learning outcome as defined the Poisson ratio, define Bernoulli's theorem, define Navy Bayes theorem. Uh, apply uh, the blah 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 uh, uh, in navy based classifier and find out the result right so when i uh, uh, for this problem apply, apply the regression technique to find out the you know the solution so what is happening here whenever you are you are making the learning outcome right so the learning outcome is easily it can be converted as a question there so if you are preparing the learning outcome at micro level, then you can understand that the learning outcomes are not just a learning outcome. These are all question bank. The learning outcome is nothing but the question bank. The learning outcome is nothing but the question bank. Because learning outcome only converted as a question in the question paper. That we have to understand. So if there is no question like uh, what, when, why, where, then remaining questions and all directly it is as learning outcome only. Whenever we can have a what, why, where, how, so those questions, we are simple modification. We are doing on the words and we are asking. Otherwise, the learning outcome directly can be converted as a question paper. That is why it is called a question bank. For example, write a program, right? This is the learning outcome. So I can ask directly uh, this component. This is the ability. But here, this type, this area, I can change it periodically. I can change it or specific problem I can give. Then use of arrays and the strings in the C program. So here I can say I can ask a program because this is a learning outcome. Use different type of define, use to develop, differentiate between structures. So here you see this is I can consider as a question bank. Since it is a what is called a learning outcome, I can consider this as a question bank because I am going to prepare the question completely based on these learning outcomes. Okay. So Preparation of the learning outcome is the first component. Then uh, higher level learning outcome. Normally, if you have a course outcome, then uh, you can write the micro level outcome. That is what here I can have some few examples. This is one example. This is another example, right? So once you prepare the learning outcome, then you can have that is called a target. Actually, I should not use the different different words. So here again, I am saying that a target. Uh, now, what is called this is a learning outcome. Okay, L learning L L. Okay, I am saying that this again. So what is happening? I have a, suppose I have a nine outcomes, nine outcomes here. So first outcome, how I am going to test first two outcomes. So I am saying that as a subject expert, first two outcomes, I am going to conduct the quizzes. Then outcomes number three, four, five, I'm going to conduct the standardized test. Outcome number five, six, seven, that cannot be conducted through what is called a standardized test that has to be done through lab assessment. 
then capstone project then seminar and assignment so like you know you can specify the what is the assessment method you have to follow because already i have explained to you there are a different assessment methods are available under the direct assessment okay so which direct assessment method can be helpful for assessing the the learning outcome that table i have to prepare once i have prepared the table then you can understand that the these two outcomes what ability you want to develop so that based on that only i am going for the quizzes these three outcome what ability i wanted to check among the students that is the reason i go for suppose 5 6 7 is nothing but the application ability so since i wanted to know the application ability of the student that is the reason i conduct the lab assessment so you must be very clear with the, what kind of assessment you have to set for uh, assessing the outcome of or achieving the outcome of an individual so that is the assessment plan so once you see that then different kind of a test items you can see different kind of a test items you can see so one kind of a test item is one kind of a, a test item is a selection type and another kind of a test item is a supply type okay one kind of a, a selection type and a supply type So selection type is where the student they are selecting the answer. Okay, so it is mostly on recognized level, recognized level. So the teacher is recognize the sorry the student is recognize the answer. Okay, most on recognized level. So this is supply type most on recall, understand, and application. But I can set the question paper even in MCQ with application level questions. Sometimes we are having the competitive exam question paper where we are setting the mcq which is completely application level. but generally you know the, the theory cycle you know the, the pedagogy theory says whenever you are going for it it is you know uh, recognized level i can see the options based on the option i can remember what is the answer is okay so that way so the test items can be considered as a two type one is a selection type and the second one is a supply type so selection type is where the student select the answer such as a true or false then multiple choice then matching okay so in true or false you can have selection a single selection in the true or false you can have a single selection then multi selection even multi selection you can do in a different way okay i will teach you how uh, you can do different way in the multi selection then k type mcq relationship analysis okay relationship analysis so that this are all the different way you can set the uh, mcq so the matching uh, type also you can do when you are coming to a supply type you can have a completion type item that is a fill in the blank item then you can have a short answer item then long answer item then problem solving item in the long answer itself you can have a completely open question open ended question then structured essay question so uh, you can have a, a question uh, uh, item question item with the various category you can set any kind of item depend upon the requirement of the assessment plan okay so you are having the assessment plan so depend upon the requirement of assessment plan you can uh, pick up any kind of a question item category any kind of a question item category okay that fundamentally we have to understand so let us see how to set the short answer question you are all aware that a short answer question is very simple type of a question normally the part a uh, a component we will have a short answer question right so here the student they are going to supply their answers with the two or three sentences the student are going to supply their answers and restricting their answer script to two to three sentences or it may be up to maximum of four sentences okay so here the 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 student must aware that the length of the answer okay so that way your question must clearly said what exactly you are looking for on the two more question for example uh, you can have a defined poisson ratio defined poisson ratio so it is definitely it is between uh, two or three sentences then list three importance uses of uh, poor conductors state the principles of anything 
write two difference between procedure oriented versus object oriented with respect to member functions so whenever we are going to set the question paper it is not simply asking what is poisson ratio so what is poisson ratio is it a right format or define poisson ratio is a right format so what is poisson ratio the student can explain the poisson ratio okay because you are asking what means it is very generic word define the poisson ratio means they have to clearly exactly give the statement on the poisson ratio suppose i say that define ohms law or what is ohms law so what is ohms law we have to avoid that is not the right way of asking the question so define ohms law state so state and define whenever we are coming for theorem and principles and whenever we are looking for any list then list how many you wanted to know okay so whether list any three or list three like you have to specify okay so that way whenever you wanted to ask the short answer question the short answer question must be very narrow down and you are expecting the answers within uh, two to uh, three sentences maximum of four sentences okay that is the way we have to ask the short answer question so design short answer items which are appropriate assessment for a learning objective that we have to understand what is the meaning here i have a learning outcome the learning outcome fundamental this is any kind of a question we are going to set your question item whatever the question item in the question paper it has to meet the learning outcome okay that is what very much important if your question paper is not within the boundary of learning outcome then your question paper is out of syllabus that is what the students say maybe i will uh, uh, i will share my entire screen so that i can teach you about the boundary right i will share the entire screen i think now, now my entire screen is visible to you right so i am opening the word right suppose i wanted to set the short answer question i wanted to set the short answer so short answer question i have to set the boundary what is the meaning of boundary so you are all aware that you are all aware that the revised bloom taxonomy okay in the revised bloom taxonomy we can have a cognitive dimension and a knowledge dimension okay so cognitive and knowledge so here it is talking about what here it is talking about why it is talking about i am not writing the full i am writing only for two more question how okay so here it is talking about remember here it is talking about understand here we is talking about apply assume that your question your learning outcomes are in the level of only this much not beyond that okay and the knowledge dimension also your content also restricting up to how not why not okay so now you see when i am going to set the question when i am going to set the which kind of a question i am going to set the two mark question i should not simply set the question here and there so i have to set the boundary i have to set the boundary so the boundary is i can set the boundary like this i can set the boundary like this so if i set the boundary here if i set the boundary here okay if i set the boundary i set the boundary here okay so all my two mark questions are all my two mark questions sir only within this okay i can set all the two more so two more question short answer question short answer so here also short answer okay so this is what i am going to set so all my short answer question i am setting only within the boundary so why i am doing like this why i am doing like this because see the short answer question carry how much mark suppose you are saying that two more questions okay two more questions so the two more questions means i am setting certain complexity complexity so the complexity assume that one question is at this point another question is completely on this point there is a gap there is a length between these two so one is on at this point another one is in this point okay you just think about it there is a wide distance between these two so uh, there is no justification on 
scoring there is no justification on scoring to have a justification of scoring and to have the proper complexity of the question in the two mark question i set the boundary so all my two mark question within this boundary so there is a justification on scoring as well as the complexity is also at a certain level so like i have to set the boundary for setting the two mark question paper and this boundary has to be supported by the learning outcome that is the first point design short answer item which are appropriate assessment for learning objective or outcome the question must be simple clear and unambiguous what is the meaning is the short answer question is not to you know too much of complex and it is a simple question and whatever the way i understood the same way the students also understood that way it has to be there and you have to give the scope for the student to write the answer in a limited manner right uh, then interpretable uh, so yeah, both are interpreting that is myself as well as the student the teacher and the student interpreting the question paper in the same way as the question is simply asked there is no benefit to, to breaking the question into a series of simple tasks so uh, don't see make the student to do uh, uh, write the subheading for the short answer question sometimes when we are asking this uh, short answer question where the student again to make the subheading what is the meaning is the question is not suitable for short answer question the student started uh, you know uh, started to make the subheading one subheading two subheading three subheading four like in the short answer question then the question need to be asked in the essay type of question not in the short answer question right uh, and sometime what will happen the the teacher will ask the short answer question and later the short answer question may be a an answer or may be a clue for another kind of a short answer question or another kind of a essay type of question that we have to avoid okay and you have to use constructed response then objective scoring expecting answer highly moderately structured so constructed response in the sense the answer is exactly what you are expecting okay the answer is exactly what you are expecting that is what is called constructed response okay so there is no change in the statement that is a principles facts theorem so there is a constructive response so objective scoring is nothing but the student they have to uh, you know uh, the two mark or one mark if it is true right so one and a half mark suppose i am asking uh, uh, define ohms law i should not give a one mark because defining ohms law is it should be a principle okay so they have to give clear cut statement so such a way we have to bring the you know the questions then you know sometime it can go with the uh, highly or moderately structured what is the meaning is suppose you are asking uh, list three uh, differences so they can write in the moderately structure so that way that answer script we are expecting from the students right the next one is what are the different kind of a question i can ask in the short answer question the one kind of a question is a definition question the second kind of a question is called example question the third kind of the question is called uh, relationship question the fourth type is called calculation question then the fifth one is the last one is called graphing and diagram oriented question so these are all the different uh, you know category of uh, uh, questions what you can ask in the two mark question paper so definition question is you know you are all aware example question is you are asking the student to give the example for the particular principle and bringing the differences or you know uh, the pros and cons that is what is called relationship question then calculation question you are asking a simple uh, understanding ability with the small problem then you are giving some engineering mechanics you are giving some diagram ask the student to solve the diagram such kind of a question you can ask in the a uh, short answer question so you have to understand that when i am going to ask the uh, you know any uh, problem don't think that it is application oh. they are understanding the problem and they are applying okay the principles okay it may be little bit application but it is not purely a implementation new implementation that we have to understand right then the next kind of a question is mcq question how to set the mcq question actually the mcq question you can have a single response multiple response k type then relationship analysis these are all the different type of mcq 
so single response means there is a only one response multiple response means there is a more than one response for that then k type means relationship analysis that is you can have a see k type and relationship analysis sometime mixed together and you can have a mcq questions okay so let me give the guidelines for mcq questions let me give the guidelines for mcq questions okay so once you are going for setting the guideline for you know uh, mcq questions see <clears throat> alignment to your micro level learning outcome that already i told you whenever you are going to set the question that question should be aligned with the micro level learning outcome so what is the meaning of alignment maybe i will give a clarity here i will give a clarity here it may be little bit on teaching learning practice see there is a three kind of a questions one three kind three kind of a questions one is called learning question what is called a learning question okay the second one is called instruction question the third one is called assessment question then the last one is called alignment so i didn't say that alignment in within the three so i wanted to give more on lq iq and aq so what is the meaning is learning question is at the end of the course what are all the ability need to be developed among the students so that is what is called learning ability the student must aware after learning the content what i am going to uh, do right so to meet or to develop that ability what are the kind of instruction set you know strategy i have to follow so the instruction strategy should support for this learning suppose the instruction strategy at that level but learning it's in this level definitely the strategy will not meet okay because little bit means it will the student can improve sometime if it is the same level that's absolutely fine but it should not be like this if it is like that then it this this strategy does not meet the specific ability need to be developed then see i have a learning question what the student has to learn and i can have a instruction question i mean questions that is what strategy i have to use then whether whatever the learning and whatever the instruction whether the particular thing is assessed by your question paper or not so it is in the same level so my learning question and my instruction is the same level my assessment is also in the same level i am not you know uh, ignoring any content in the uh, unit i am not asking any content which is above the i mean away from the unit so whatever learning that that component okay so whatever the learning component my question paper whatever the learning component my question paper is again aligning this my instructional strategy is also aligning this so all three are aligned at the same level or not that is what is called alignment question so i have to check lq iq aq all are aligned it should not be like this if it is like this learning at you are expecting high level okay you are develop you the student they have to develop the ability which is very high but your uh, uh, instruction strategy does not support for that and your assessment also very simple assessment so this much content you know this level never assessed so this kind of a thing should not be there that is what the meaning of uh, here all mcq questions are aligned with the course learning outcomes and all mcq questions must to provide opportunity for student to demonstrate appropriate level of ability okay because that learning outcome okay so this is on learning outcome so this is a checklist to uh, guideline okay whether my question paper need need for improvement or it is standardized okay so if i follow this guideline or i can say this is a checklist which my question paper having yes in all achieved in all then i can say it is a standard if i have to make any review then i can do the review on the specific criterion on the specific criterion right then now i am coming to question that is called stem okay the in a, in a mcq uh, the question is called stem so first of all open ended or open ended or what is called open ended or uh, <clears throat> unfocused items uh, that is a stem have not been used suppose i can have a, a stem the stem is completely open ended okay it is not possible to uh, ask the question 
using the short answer i have to go for uh, you know uh, uh, that question is set by mistake or you know the question is not appropriate at this level so that kind of a question or unfocused unfocused in the sense even after supplying the answer okay normally in the two you know short answer mcq question if i am supplying the answer then that statement must be a complete statement or you must have a complete that particular item okay suppose still that item is not completed okay even after i am giving the answer suppose uh, 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 something i am giving as a statement dash then statement if i fill this uh, item uh, no answer that is mcq option then what is the meaning is that the statement should be a complete statement suppose the statement is not a complete statement not a complete statement then what is the meaning is uh what is the meaning is uh, uh it is unfocused or it is open ended then next as a second another uh, uh, no important uh, component or guideline is whenever we can have a negative word using never not okay uh, then that word should be bold and capital or it with the underline okay such a way we have to do such a way we have to do okay so you have to see that whether the word is cap you know whenever you have a uh, letter with the negative word okay whenever you can have a negative word not never something like that then it must be in the capital or or you have to make it as a bold with the underline right the stem does not contain any unnecessary information that not contribute the response so that way you have to be very careful your stem is very clear and uh, simple okay uh, a simple means it must have a necessary wording not unnecessary wording sometime it may give some clue okay grammatical clue so those things we have to avoid then the indicators i mean that is a, sorry the distractors or the keys i can say it's called options so we can have a three to four options right and all distractors are plausible actually it should not superfluous it should not underflow also okay responsible i mean reasonable actually uh, reasonable uh, spelling mistake reasonable and a note uh, you know actually i prefer i have to change it okay so the key for all distracted follow grammatically the stem okay sometime uh, i end with the is then i am looking for a uh, plural okay so by the time i have to say is bar or like i have to put that. so the you know whenever i say the uh, uh, keys and grammatically it has to fit all part of the stem is not repeated in the key sometime what will happen you can add the word in the stem itself but instead of adding the word in the stem you are putting all the word in the options so those things we have to avoid when we talk about the this you know that options then absolute options have not been used what is called all of the above okay let me uh, give the detail all of the above none of the above what will be the problem then vague actually probably usually rarely uh, except frequently these kind of uh, uh, vague options we have to avoid because sometime it may be true sometime it may be false okay so unequally it is true or false that is very much important sometime it is true sometime it is false or uh, the temperature is between these two range okay there are two option play the range so those things vague options we have to avoid okay then that orders uh, that that uh, key i mean that option should be in the logical order or chronological numerical suppose one you can have a uh of you know what the number of uh, uh, colors in the rainbow assume that so i can have a four five six uh, you know like like i can have a uh, things like i can have the chronological order what i can have it then the key and the distractor does not have any overlap this is what the already i told you, you know uh, for example i can have a you know suppose i i i have a problem yes why it is Okay, i have a problem here suppose this is a stem i have a stem statement okay then i can have option uh, 20 uh, uh, degree to 40 degree is the first option second option is 30 degree to 50 degree as a second option so what is the meaning is the suppose i can have a 35 35 is playing role here 35 is also playing a role here so what is the meaning is the the keys and distractors does not have any overlap is overlap is there so this is also a correct answer this is also a correct answer 
if the answer is between i mean a 35 assume that it is 30 to 35 or 30 to 40 i can select this also this also this kind of things we have to avoid so overall each question is independent from the others to avoid one question providing clue for others so for example i am giving that <coughs> Uh, what is CMS? So I can have a four options: A comma, B comma, C comma. Okay. Then second question is: I have a, a content management system. Content management system is helpful to develop. So I can have option A comma, B comma, C comma, D. Suppose assume that here I am asking that what is CMS. Then at one point of time somewhere else I can put like this. So it's nothing but this is the clue for answering for this kind of a question. Sometime when we are going to set the question paper 100 or a 200, we may forget about these things. So that we have to avoid. So location of the key is eventually distributed throughout the assessment. Okay, distributed across the response. Sometimes what is happening for few questions, few questions, you have uh, four options. For few, three options. For few, you can have a true or false options. Okay, false. It is not wrong, but uh, no. Generally, it says that uh, try to have a, whenever you have a what is called a, a MCQ kind of a questioning with the you can have a you know student they are going to shade the answers in the OMR sheet. Better you can have you know options as a common option throughout the question paper. Okay. I will tell you one uh, occurrence uh, when we conducted the question, I mean examination for recruitment of one state government, right? Actually, we have a OMR. OMR, we cannot prepare, uh, OMR sheet, we cannot prepare for two more question. I mean, two options, three options and uh, four options. So we prepared the OMR for four options, for each question, four options, okay? So we have 120 questions. 80 questions are having four options. Then remaining 40 questions are only true or false questions alone okay so what happened actually we have seen from few uh, omr questions even after 80 some students shaded c and d okay for many questions what is the meaning is the student concentrating <coughs> or spending their time to solve first 80 questions and they didn't find time to complete the remaining question. Maybe they are in the question number 70, almost next to 10 minutes only. Then they never see the question paper because there is no negative marking. What the candidate did, the candidate randomly shading A, B, C, D, something like that. But they never saw the questions from 80 to 120. They are all only true or false. Okay. If they are aware of there are only true or false, then they will uh, shade only A or B. But here, the students shared A or B. Sometimes they shaded C and D also. So what is the meaning is this is happening because of a few questions we have put like this. So this is sometime it may be, you know, uh, you know, it may be what is called the student not at all seeing the question paper. But generally we, when, we, when we talk about the question is having the what is called the location of the key is eventually distributed throughout the assessment. The key and the distractors are similar in terms of grammatical. Already I told you no grammatical spelling errors should be present, right? Uh, acronyms are written sometimes whenever you can have acronyms don't to, just to put a, a cnn and you give the complete word complete word so review this kind of uh, you know i will give maybe i will give this uh, uh, review sheet to uh, uh, to the coordinator you can take the review sheet before setting the uh, uh, you know whenever you set the question paper you just to check uh, do the checklist now i come back to some of the sample questions for example all of the above for example, all of the above. All of the above is uh, something like a chat. Let me check any chat. Anybody uh, wanted to, yeah, anybody, if you wanted to ask any question, kindly put into the chat box so that I will uh, answer for your question, please. Actually, anybody would like to uh, type uh, any, any query in the chat box, please, participants. Hope I'm audible to you. 
uh, anybody would like to uh, ask any questions you please type into the chat box so that i will explain to you yes uh yeah i am audible uh, if you have any question i will i will i will uh, you know answer for this if you have any question please yeah i am audible yes 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 uh, maybe uh, yeah median answer median answer i uh, 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 ranju sharma sir uh, what exactly your question oh for this question you are asking <laughs> no ranju sharma sir this is the example this is the example uh, ranju sharma sir uh, why we have to go for all of the above okay why we have to go for all of the above that is what my uh, how should the mcq to test higher order thinking uh, prepared is there any criteria absolutely but uh, shing Uh, whenever we go for higher order level we have to use the questions like k type questions MC, relationship analysis which will bring the what is called uh, mcq question which will uh, help you to assess the higher order level of student ability a hard question hot yes okay uh, fine let me uh, go one by one yes yes fine uh, any other question you can type into the chat box so that i can answer so that i can answer so for example why we should not use all of the above the reason behind okay the reason is all of the above the student recognize any two options are correct okay because suppose if you have four options okay four options then option 1 option 2 option 3 option 4 so any one of the option is all of the above according to this so the student look for any two answers is correct they will not know whether check whether the third option is all of the above or not so because there is a single selection so single selection this is also correct this is also correct that is not possible so ultimately they decide that this is all of the above okay that is the reason so that kind of a question how we have to change okay suppose you wanted to bring this all of the above question what way we can change so which one of the following are measures of central tendency which which of the following are measures of central uh, uh, central tendency that is mean median mode then all of the above so here the central tendency you can say as me median and i can also use a mean and the mode to support that value so what i can do i can uh, revise to that question revise to that question which are all so range percentile median then variance is skewness kurtosis then mean median mode correlation mean standard deviation so i can have so by the way instead of having suppose all three the all three are the right answer okay instead of having the all of the above you can have this kind of a question which will bring all of the above as well as this will give the you know you, you uh, none all of the above we have avoided here all of the above we have avoided here so that way we have to make the all of the above then none of the above bernoulli deals with the outcome of number of dash trial or trials so this is what is called Uh, this this is what is called the grammatical so here suppose if you have a plural i mean multiple then it is not a trial it's a only one trial so if it is more than one means trials so that is the reason here i put the what is called grammatically i wanted to make the fit so bernoulli uh, deals with the outcome of the uh, 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 trials of the event outcome of the single uh, more than one trial outcomes of the discrete trial outcome of the continuous trial out none of the above actually here the answer is none of the above but what is the problem is none of the above doesn't mean that the, the student could select none of the above know the answer so what is the meaning is the student uh, the student uh, uh, maybe think about something else than something else than uh, the single trial so single trial is the correct answer but uh, the student may think something else so that is the reason 
none of the above doesn't mean that you will have a you, you can clear that the student know the answer so what is the meaning here is if you have none of the above so any one of the option must be a right answer any one of the answer must be the right answer uh, and suppose here instead of more than one you can have a single then you can have none of the above more than one if you have a single then you can say none of the above otherwise you can put the options like this okay that is the way you can do it that is the way you can do it Then grammatically fit, grammatically fit. Grammatically fit is nothing but see A or an. Suppose if I say an, immediately the student looking for which answer is starting with the vowel. Which answer is starting with the vowel. Okay, so that is the reason. Always we have to say A or an. So that I can have a, the, the answer is a starting with vowel or an answer is not starting with vowel. So grammatically, suppose if I give a and then they are looking. Such a way we have to make the uh, what is called MCQ with the grammatically fit. Grammatically fit. Okay. Then anxiety negative wording. Already I told you negative wording means it has to be capital with the bold or something like an underline so that it will be very clear to the candidate. Then sometime you wanted to set the question which is a little bit higher order level, right? Then you can go for pathway or process. Instead of, see, normally you can have a single selection. Single selection is lower order thinking skills. Multiple selection is higher order thinking skills. So instead of going for multiple selections, what you can do, you can have this kind of a process. So once you have a, this kind of a process, you can set some sequence on the process. You can set some sequence on the process. So once you are setting the sequence on the process, which sequence the answer is correct, which sequence the answer is correct. So that will be go a little bit higher order level. That will go with the timeline or any pathway or any set of process. So those kind of a question you can watch out with the flowchart type or any ordered item you can go with the, this kind of a question. And a K type of question, which again, this question will be very much useful to set the higher order level question. So I can have a stem. After the stem, I can have one, two, three. Then I can say one only the option, one and three only, one and two only, one and uh, uh, two and three only, like I can have option. So here they have to consider this statement and this statement, both statements. Sometimes one or two, like I can put R condition, sometimes I can put the uncondition. So they have to bring the relationship. If one is true and three is false, like I'm putting the statement. So these kind of a statements, once you put then those kind of a question definitely will bring the uh, ability of higher order level, bring the ability of the higher order level. This is what uh, 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 Bharti Singh uh, asked that uh, how, would, how should MCQ to test the higher order thinking. So MCQ, when you want to test in the higher order thinking, you can say, test the question, watch out process, timeline, pathway. This is one kind of higher order question where you can set with the flowchart types and uh, uh, ordered items. The second one is you can have a K type questions where you can do relationship analysis and mixed uh, statements. Here you can have a sequence of statements, but the sequence of statements with a mixed relationship where you can bring the which answer is a correct answer, where the student has to identify the relation between, between the two concepts and they are bringing, okay, or two items and they are bringing. Such a way you can do that one. Yeah, thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. So that way you can do that one. Uh, then next uh, uh, thing is we can go with the uh, actually a crossword. Crossword is one of the fantastic uh, item to uh, set the question paper. So uh, actually I wanted to give a demo on this. Actually crossword you can uh, uh, prepare using a tool. Crossword you can prepare using a tool. Maybe can I spend uh, just uh, five minutes to uh, uh, prepare the crossword with a tool? Then you can, shall I spend five minutes on a particular technology tool where you can prepare the crossword participant shall we go then next we will set the uh, table of specification with the, uh, this one okay so actually uh, the tool is called hot potatoes the tool is called hot potatoes so the hot potato is a tool which will be helpful to prepare the crossword so there is a uh, you can download the hot potato it is available in the 
uh, not all panelists i will put into all uh, participants all attendees okay so it is available in hot hot dot u v i c dot uh, c a i think yeah this is the site you can get the software okay mm. hot pot yeah this is the site where you can get the uh, software it's a free software okay you no need to spend any money you no need to spend any money it is a completely a free software okay you download this so once you download and install then you will have this kind of a window uh, this kind of icon so in this kind of icon you just check this then there, there is a j cross there is a different way you can uh, you know there are different tools are there but just now we are going to see only j cross so once you click j cross okay first you set uh, what is the title of this okay a i c t e okay a i c t e as a title i am just i am giving a title any title you can give your subject title then manage grid set the grid size so grid size is suppose you wanted to have a 20 as a size grid is 20 I mean crossword grid is 20 then you can set now it's a simple one you know so that just for demonstration i can set that as a 10 then once you set the grid size, then go to automatic grid maker, automatic grid maker from the manage grid. So if you go to automatic grid maker, then here you have to give the clue. Later for the clue, you have to give the, uh, what is called, uh, the, the uh, clue you have to give. Then I am giving the, uh, what is called, the word called mouse printer, okay, uh, screen, software. Uh, Gmail. Just the example only I am giving. Okay. Then uh, mobile. Okay. Like I am giving this. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Then uh, 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 10, you know, you have to give 8. Okay. 10 means you can give mostly that is 8. Uh, then computer. Computer computer like i will give okay uh, computer then one more is what is called uh, mm, a processor okay very good processor very nice processor okay uh, navin kumar sign set processor so, okay so i can make the grid actually what it is saying that stop now that is good enough actually saying that uh, the grid is full the grid is full that is the reason software is not coming here software is not s o f t w a r e eight eight characters but there is no space for that so software is not coming here uh, and the word should be less than uh, you know almost you know less than uh, eight or something already software unable to get it here now what i am going to do add clues the next option is i am going to do a add clue so once i give a add clue so i am giving gmail what is the clue uh, mail application from google okay i click okay then processor it is r of computer to perform AL arithmetic logic operations AL operations then screen soft output from a, from from a computer just i am giving okay then mobile used for communication used for communication okay just then mouse input Okay, then computer process. Okay, printer device as just the example I am giving. Okay, but uh, uh, the word should be a single word. I think you are all aware that uh, these words are single word uh, thing. So, like I am giving, so click OK. So you can use this one for two way. One is you can use it as a soft copy as well as we can use it as a hard copy. 
So how to use it as a soft copy? You can use it as a soft copy. What way? What I can do? I can file create a web page. For, before that, I will save this project. Okay. Save this project. A I C T E. Right. Now file create web page standard format. A I C T E. Okay. So now you see view in the exercise in the browser. Now you can see that when I click one, then the uh, mail application. So Gmail. Then when I click two, then input device of a computer. Mouse. Mouse. Okay. When I click three, when I click three. Okay. So click three, I will get. When I click three, then so this is a soft copy. This is a soft copy. Suppose you wanted to bring the hard copy and you wanted to give to the students, right? Then you can give for export for printing. Okay, click OK. So now you see that the hard copy is there. Here you can have a cross down. So Control P, you will get the whole uh, document here. Okay, sometime if you have a hard or soft copy, then actually you can take the hard or soft copy uh, with the suppose if you say that all uh, portrait and uh, uh, the shade uh, will not you wanted to have a black shade. Okay, suppose sometime uh, people may not like the black shade because that cartridge will go out. But here it is saying that across if you wanted to have a, a black or black and a, a, a shade also that that you can select from your computer. So such a way you can bring the copy. So right. So if you do like this, if you do like this, this copy, you can circulate to your students. The students are very happy to answer for as an assignment or something like that. So you can prepare this kind of a 20 or a 30 and you give the uh, this kind of assignment to your students as a group assignment. Definitely they will be happy. So this kind of a question once you are going to set, this will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, increase the what is called uh, the, the interesting increase the interesting among the uh, students interest among the students. OK, so that way you can do. Is it clear participant? Is it clear this one? Is it clear? Let me move further. Is it clear? Yes, OK, OK. Uh, then when we go for structured essay question, I mean essay type of question, uh, essay type of question. Actually, already we have discussed that there is a structure uh, essay open ended question, then a structured essay question. Open ended question means normally whenever we are going to set the question, that question is, uh, I know the question is completely open ended. The question is completely open ended, where where uh, uh, you are allocating the scoring like a sixteen mark or something like that. Uh, suppose if you have a structured essay question, the same essay type of open ended question, you can convert that as a series of tasks. You can convert that question as a series of tasks. Once you are converting that question as a series of tasks, then it's called structured essay question. So while you are converting the series of tasks, you have to convert within the limited number, not too much. You must uh, uh, convert it to some the limited number. Suppose I can have a open ended question, then uh, the series of tasks may be a, a maximum three. So 16 mark can be divided as a, uh, a four mark, then another four mark, then eight mark, like you can make it. Why? Because the number of sample also get increased. In your question paper, you must have number of questions should be appropriate. That is called appropriate sample. So the question sets are the question sets and the number, right? These are all called samples to assess the student knowledge. Am I right or wrong? So by the way, if the sample is not appropriate, then the minimum amount of sample does not reveal the proper result. I think you are all aware. After the election, many people give postpone. Sometimes it may be true by someone, sometimes it may be false by someone. Why it has become false? Because the people who voted in a different category, Maybe below poverty line, middle class, lower middle class, uh, upper middle class, upper class, lower class, like a different category of people based on their economic level or socially, right? There are different uh, you know, reasons for that. When I am going to interview or get the survey from the people, 
I have to get the survey from all the sections of people in all. Then only the sample will be a right sample. Suppose if I take the survey from only one section of the people, those section of the people satisfied with the one kind of a candidate, that candidate may not be the selected candidate after the election. That is the reason sample is very much important for give the prediction. So here, your sample is very much important because you are not going to set the questions from the entire nook and corner of the book. You are going to set the question that questions are samples only. So those samples should be appropriate sample. The number should be appropriate and the complexity of the each sample is, should be appropriate. If your sample is not appropriate, then whatever the outcome of the examination, right, that will not write one, that will not give the right things. Okay, will you accept participant? Will you accept the statement? Yes, yes. So once you wanted to have appropriate sample, right, then instead of asking the open-ended question as a single question, as a 16 mark, what you can do, you can make that question as a series of tasks that is called, uh, you know, uh, 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 structured essay question, okay? And you have to see that whether the question is, uh, whether the question is the wordings, everything concise, and it is really the behavior of the question is expecting the uh, proper answer script from the uh, uh, student, okay? That is what we have to uh, see when we talk about the guideline, right? Then uh, it should be unambiguous. Unambiguous in the sense, it should not have any ambiguity in the questions, okay? Ambiguity, confusing the questions, okay? We should not have any confusing in the questions. So again, as already I told you, it has to meet the learning outcome. It has to meet the learning outcome. It has to meet the learning outcomes, okay? That is very much important. Then in a set set of structured essay question, each part should be independent and complete in itself. Sometime when I do the structured essay question, the, the result of the first one is the input of the second one. The, in, the, the result of the second one will go to the input of the third one. So in this category, what will be the problem is, what will be the problem is, the student makes mistake in the first option, first part, then that mistake will carry out the entire thing. So, Whenever we have a structured essay question, not too tightly coupled and also not completely between two, three concepts. It should be in a single concept. So it is called a loosely coupled item. But again, it's not too much of rest on the one item to another. So that way, we have to be very clear, right? And the items when you have a structured essay, then each item should have increasing order of difficulty, okay? So not, you may have a same order, but not a decreasing order of difficulty, okay? So you have a A, B, C, then A should have a lesser difficulty, then B may be a higher difficulty, then C may be a highest difficulty, not in the reverse. That way we have to be careful, right? And we should not use the word like briefly, discuss briefly, explain all you know about, uh, explain briefly, all the words we have to avoid. What is the reason behind this? Discuss itself is a, what is called, it's a brief only. Explain itself, it's a brief only. Why we have to go for briefly? So ultimately, what will happen? The student will uh, write the the answer, okay? Which is which is whatever the relevant things are there. That all the things they will write, okay? Write all you know about, okay? So those things we have to avoid. And there is another thing is you are all aware that for this question paper, calculator is must. Okay, you are all aware. The students are aware, but it is not mentioned in the question paper. Sometimes that may lead to some problem. So whenever we set the question paper, we should be clearly give the indication what is the required things for the question. And any question which need any constant temperature, constant pressure, okay, or the pressure is this much, or the, the estimation is this much, or assumption is like this. So all the thing, maybe you should not say that, sir, this guy, this subject, uh, they, they, they should aware of what is the constant, the temperature constant, that is correct. But when we set the question paper, we should be very clear that uh, what exactly uh, the, uh, what exactly the the direction is that we have to provide that we have to provide okay uh, these are all some set of guidelines for setting the essay type of questions so whatever the scenario we will set the essay type of question is comparison of two things relationship involving cause and effect the explanation of the use summary or inference from the known principle and facts then any analysis illustrations any classifications application of rules 
discussion by multiple interpretation, then statement of aim, purpose of uh, his or her selection, then criticism on correctness or relevance, outline methods and procedures, explain or define a problem or principle, detailing observation and offering remarks. So in this category, you can go for essay type of question, right? Now we are going to discuss about what is called the, the, the exact component which we have to look into uh, set the question paper, which is called a table of specification. Uh, Ashish, can I take another 10 minutes, Ashish? I think yes, yes. Actually, until 12.15 is fine. And if you need a little bit more time, that is also okay. No issues. You okay, can take okay, as much time okay. as you want. Because 10.30 to 12, they said, but I will go with it because table of specification, I have to explain to them. No, yes, yes. Please do that. Okay, okay. I have some chat. Suppose MCQ based on examination is 60 minutes duration. What is the approximate number of uh, MCQ should uh, be included? Yeah, so actually there is a question from Bharati Singh that uh, how, uh, see, suppose I have a 60 minute duration, then uh, what is the approximate? See, it is completely based on the subject expert because subject expert where you are looking for higher order ability, then you can go for 90 seconds for each question or uh, two minutes for each question. Suppose if you're looking for only understanding ability, then one minute is okay. And uh, remember and understand ability are mixed, then one minute is okay for each question. Suppose if you go for application level question, this, so you have to calculate. Uh, normally, whenever you have to set the question, you have to see this question is coming under which ability, this question coming under which ability. Suppose a kind of a question which need to be uh, uh, find the solution of the given problem, then only they will see the answer. Then for those questions, you can give a two minutes time, okay, for those questions. And it is not like a fixed that a 60 question means 16 minutes, uh, 40 question means 40. There is no fixed thing. It is completely on the subject expert who set the question paper. What is saying? Is it clear to you? Yes. Okay. So next one is the table of specifications. So table of specifications where uh, this is a reference table to make your question with the appropriate sample where you can have a content and ability or two dimensions. So this table is like a matrix table. It's a two dimension table, okay, two dimension table. So the table where suppose you can have a unit one here, okay, you can have a one, two, three, four, five. Five units are there, five units are there, right? Then you see in many universities, they are asking the question paper setter to set 20 marks from the each unit, 20 marks from the each unit. In some places, see, these are all some university guidelines. Some places, all the units should have equal weightage. In some universities or autonomous institutions, each unit has minimum of 10% weightage and maximum of 30%. Otherwise, what will happen? Somebody will ignore one unit or very less percentage only the question paper play the role in the question paper. So to avoid those things, they will set a minimum of 10% and maximum of 30%. So if you do like this, if you do like this, then so subject expert may feel that a particular unit is very much important and they will increase the number of questions from the question paper and a unit is not it is not like not important maybe the unit is less uh, you know uh, participation in learning the whole course okay or the this is only on only remember level which will be like a refreshment refresh the uh, component which they have studied in the uh, 12th standard first year second year like that then that cost that unit may we, we may have a lesser uh, importance where i will test only 10 percent such a kind of a thing we can have it otherwise this is many universities they follow so in this way so here uh, suppose here i can set 20 20 20 all the unit 20 20 20 all the unit okay so but the, based on the the complexity based on the complexity based on the complexity uh, of a particular course, how much question should be from the remember level, how much question from the understand level, how much question from the apply level that we have to decide. As a subject expert, you have to decide this. As a subject expert, you have to decide.
decide this okay so here what we are doing here what we are doing we are going to uh, prepare a table of specification what are the conditions what are the conditions we have to see what are the conditions we have to see uh, to set the weightage for each unit okay these are all the condition i do not know today uh, the curriculum sectors are really contributing uh, and involving in this see sometime it may not happen so many times it is happening actually the number of units is a guideline for see number of hours for each unit always we have a right side but many time uh, the, the curriculum sectors are not you know uh, uh, concentrating on that but that is a reference point or i can say this these are all the like a landmark to the uh, the, the the faculty member uh, how much uh, time we have to spend so this is also playing the role uh, how much weightage i have to give for the particular unit then usefulness of the content matter of the unit a job student a student job once he become or she become a graduate the particular unit very much helpful for their job the particular unit is very much helpful to learn other courses in other semester the particular unit very much useful to learn the courses of the same semester maybe actually we cannot say that each you each each you know subject is independent to another no actually all the courses are connected to another okay by the time maybe a unit number two very well connected to another course okay so by the way this unit is very much important so these are all some guidelines are there which unit i have to give more weightage if equal weightage means we no need to consider all the things we can directly go 20 20 20 whatever the way we can go over that right but this is you have to decide the question paper sector has to decide see this course this is the course outcome so since this is the course outcome most of the course outcomes are playing the role of understanding so 60 percent i am concentrating on understanding okay and this level of course outcome need 20 percent of question paper questions should come until the remember level and the 20 percent it has to come with the application level there is no other higher order ability because the course outcome does not support for higher order ability because whatever the course outcome complexity the same level only the teacher taught in the class so question paper sector should not set the question paper which is completely beyond that one so the student may not have a scope for answering those questions so that way you have to uh, you know think about as a question paper sector you have to see what is the uh, the the the, uh, the uh, what is called the percentage or the weightage you have to give for weightage you have to give for uh, the ability the weightage you have to give for the ability okay so once you decide both once you decide this one this is percentage on unit level this is percentage on ability level okay content achievement and ability achievement once you decide this two table then you can fill the table actually here i detailed the remember you can make it as remember as a recognize and recall understand is called interpret then exemplify then classify compare uh, explain like there are seven levels are there for uh, understand and uh, two levels for apply what is called execute and implement okay so like i am given a detail but for you what you can do you can say you know a simple uh, table you want to prepare you can make it remember and understand and apply as a symbol but if you have a detail that will give more clarity on on how to uh, the reference table really help you to prepare the question so once you decide this once you decide this then uh first you fill the what is called the total or uh, individual unit then you fill the how much each unit is going to play the role so once you decide then you put the value based on you know the questions okay so like you can fill the value this is just i am pressing the uh, value but uh, we have to work on it okay we have to work on it so that uh, you know which question i have to bring so how much percentage i am going to give in recognize how much percentage i am going to give recall how much percentage I am going to give you explain? How much percentage I am going to so here? Since this is a unit one and unit two, there is no application level questions. Okay, there is no application level question for the unit one and unit two. But for the remaining unit, I can have an application. So from the fifth unit, I have a complete application level question. So such a way uh, we are designing uh, from which unit, which level that competency we are expecting. Once we fill the table, then we are going to prepare the question. Then we are going to prepare the question. So those questions, 
are having the proper complexity the proper complexity in the sense i am meeting different section of the people do you understand so in the uh, uh, voting after voting we are looking for the uh, you know the you know uh, post poll you know so all the sections are covered here so i covered the remember section i can cover the understand section because we are all aware that the based to bloom's taxonomy having different sections so from the remember to we have up to create so for ug question paper particularly i am giving this example only for the question paper called this question okay so only for uh, the question paper what i am going to consider is btech fifth semester computer communication network for this question alone i am giving the example okay i am not giving in generic i am giving because i cannot give a very generic uh, you know data to you it's a very specific data to this but the procedure is common for all the subject the procedure is common for all the subject okay that you have to understand that you have to understand so that way for computer computer communication and networks right i wanted to set the questions so that way uh, the remember level is 20 for the particular course and understand level is 60 for the particular course and apply level is 20 for the particular course so this is the thing and the questions are with the different uh, sections within understand within remember within apply so if you set the question paper in this proper sample and the error will be neglected what is the meaning actually this xi is called observed score after the question paper uh, the uh, the student writing the answer there is a score you are that evaluator will give the score that score should be a true score of an individual true score of an individual so when i will give the true score if the error is the standard error is minimized when that error will come if there is a clue in the input and uh, even without knowing studying the subject i will be able to answer and uh, there is uh, something like uh, ambiguity in the question paper unclear directions all the things are creating the error in the uh, what is called the question for example you see uh, past two days there is a big uh, you know controversy in plus two english question paper comprehensive question paper which is uh, something like they put the family where male is dominated the female this is what happening in the past two days why it is happening because the question paper setter maybe he has a different thought but uh, he has to see that whether the usability is there or not since that question if i ask within the school nobody will raise this one because that use of now it is administered for the whole country so everyone is seeing the question paper since everyone is seeing the question paper and the usability is missing here okay so usability in the sense the validity is missing here okay validity is missing here because that question is probably probably question in some cases that is true in some cases that is false okay it is not that everywhere this is happening so uh, that is a big contradiction i think everyone will aware here whoever reading the newspaper you may be aware and now uh, you know uh, that will be raised in the lok sabha also yesterday and now that cbsc board said that whoever attending that question all the eight marks will be awarded okay if they attended then the marks will be awarded that is what so that is what see when see, everyone is getting the eight mark what is the meaning that is called error so that error sometime uh, you know if there is a right passage given for the comprehensive question then the true uh, you know score will come out since there is a error placed there by the time a candidate whoever attended is also got the eight marks so the observed score may not be the true score of an individual so why it is happening this is happening because of the error is not negligible so we have to make that error is negligible why how that the error is negligible the error is negligible based on what is called the proper sample okay so your question paper in the questions your question paper in the questions uh, should be in the level of what why how so next is why not okay suppose if you are putting all the questions are why not questions then the student will say that that question paper is very difficult so when the student will say the question paper is very easy and the question uh, is difficult when the questions are only in this area the students say that the question paper is easy the questions are only in this area the student will say the question is difficult that is the reason we are having the mixed uh, what is called based on the course outcome okay so with this i will conclude my session Yes, whether the question paper with the internal overall choice should be encouraged or to be discouraged. Yeah, actually, uh, it's a right question by Dr. Dashri. Uh, I will give you a scenario. Okay, internal. Actually, whenever we go for essay type of question, of question, we, we it, it is necessary to have either or type, either or type. 
play either of type. What is the reason behind it? Suppose I have a seven post teams, seven post teams, seven post teams. Out of seven, they have to write the five answers. Five, five questions they have to answer. Okay, out of seven, they have to answer five 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 questions. By the time, even even I ignore even the student, even the student ignore one unit, the student may get may get hundred percent. Okay, so this is a, there is a possibility, right? But here you see total option is how much here? seven questions. How many questions the teacher has to set? Seven questions. Okay, the teacher has to set seven questions. Number of questions is seven. But in the either or type, the teacher has to set ten questions. Okay, so the number of questions also get increased. And again here also the student going to write five questions. Okay, here also the student going to write five questions. So number of questions also get increased and the either or type. Again in the either or type, both questions. Should be with the equal complexity. What is the meaning here? One either see suppose eleven A, where I can have a Roman letter one, Roman letter structured essay question, Roman letter three. Okay, this is what A or there is a B question. Okay, this is the structure. Assume that this is a structure. Okay. So here I am talking about define define uh, what is called maybe base theorem. Okay, define navy base theorem. Then here uh, I give uh, right five. Applications for navy base classifier. classifier. Then this is another explain something. Okay, but here totally consider consider a big problem. There are four uh, there are four values. Or ten value consider ten values and blah 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 statement blah 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 statement. Finally, uh, find the solution. Find the solution for blah 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 statement. Assume that this is a completely a problem. So normally the student will go to the safer side. Many students. So many student prefer this because if I go to this, then I will get definitely I know navy base theorem, so I will get a two mark. Then write five applications, then I will get a six mark. Then I'm explaining something, you know, 50%, then I will get. So out of uh, 16 mark, uh, I will be able to score at least 12 mark from this question. Suppose this is the problem. If I make any mistakes, then totally my 16 mark will gone. So since these are all two different complexity, because the level is something too different level. This is in the understand level. This is in the application level. This is the problem. So both questions are problem questions. Then the student select either this problem or this problem. But in this case, what will happen? All the student will select this problem. Even some student may not read what exactly the problem statement. If they read, it, maybe the problem is a very simple problem, but they will simply ignore because the, they feel that application level is always you know, a little bit complex. Okay, so they they have a fear of you know failure. So since they have a fear of failure, they will go to safer side. So this kind of uh, different ability questions, they are type we have to avoid. Okay, and we have to go for internal choice. I think Dr. Dasari uh, Nagaraju, is it clear, sir? Is it clear? Ah, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, then to create a question bank for MCQ based exam of a subject, what is the criteria to design number of MCQ uh, in the question bank? See number of MCQ in the question bank, question bank or in the question paper. So in the question bank, you can have a n number. But when you are having the question paper, you have to think about the timing. And also you should not see here it is not competitive exam. Competitive exam is filtering the candidates. Okay. Suppose there is a company, uh, maybe government is uh, no company is there. The government company, there are uh, 200 seats are there. Okay, that uh, job uh, uh, 
that recruitment is going on. Uh, they are uh, advertising the recruitment. And 200 people, uh, they badly need the candidate. They have to fill the candidate. Okay, they have to fill the candidates. So there are 200 people uh, requirement is there. Only 200 people is applied for the post. Maybe they can conduct the exam and they, 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 they will observe all the candidates. This was happened maybe very long back even in the Tamil Nadu. Whoever registered in employment exchange, they will take the candidate from employment exchange. Then there is only two is to one is the ratio because two candidate and one they will select. Suppose 10 candidate to five candidate to be selected. Earlier case, they will take entire case. Whoever registered employment no, category, they will. So when they are started to conduct the test, one post, there are 100 applications. Then I have to go for filtering. Okay, but in our college, we are not to filter the student. Okay, it is to test the knowledge of the student, assess the student performance. So once I wanted to assess, I have to set the question paper with the required complexity. It is not to see that whether my student finishing the answer within the, you know, uh, I wanted to make the question very tough and I wanted to see whether my student finishing the question within 60 minutes. That is not the purpose. Okay, that's not the purpose. Okay, that we have to understand. So appropriate timing we have to give. Uh, and uh, and the complexity I have to see that way we have to set the numbers. Okay, that way we have to. It uh, the, the question paper to assess the student knowledge. It is not to uh, show the 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 expertise of the faculty member. Okay, that we have to understand. That we have to understand. Okay, it is not to show the expertise of the faculty member can show their expertise in the delivery and uh, that should be again mapping with the complexity of the course outcomes okay for this course required this much okay uh, so that level only you have to give uh, your expertise should not be uh, uh, shown into the question paper okay that is the thing we have to understand okay so with this i will conclude my session i hope i can answer all the questions uh, uh, dr ashish uh, can i conclude uh, no yes fine if you have any more question from the participant let me Answer. No, I am just checking if there's any question. It doesn't seem like yeah, I answered any... all the questions which is in the chat yeah. box. Any Thank more so questions? Much. Then I will go. I hope uh, it's a lunch time. I should not, you know, make them angry. Uh, once they become hungry, then they will become angry. Okay. No, actually, they only get a thirty minute break, twelve to twelve thirty. So I was actually thinking that maybe we can have a little bit later the lunch time. So okay. I will start my session and then give okay. them lunch around twelve forty five because usually twelve thirty okay. is not a time when anyone does lunch. Oh, so fine, fine, fine. Uh, so, so that is okay. So, thank you so much, Dr. Needy, for the session. And based on the chat windows feedback, it seems like people were very much interactive, asking you a lot of questions, which I think is a good indication. Uh, so, thank you so much for all your time and effort. Uh, very much appreciated. It doesn't seem thank like there is any. Yeah, any thank questions. you. Thank you so much, participant, for your attentive and interactive session. Uh, yeah, we may meet in another sessions. Okay, so thank you so much. Now, thank you. I am leaving from the things. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nidhi. So hello everyone. I hope I'm audible again. I know it is your lunch time and the new session was going to start at 12.30. Uh, I just wanted to check with people. I am actually thinking that we can go for lunch at around 12.45 instead of going for lunch at now because uh, usually now is a little bit early and we also have a quiz that we, we, we need to talk about. Uh, there's a quiz that everyone needs to do. So I was thinking that what we can do now is the quiz and then we go for lunch at around 12.45. We come back at 1.15 and then we can uh, do an hour on rubrics. Does that plan sound okay to you or would you like to go for lunch now and, and not and do the quiz after you come back? So that so Dasari Nagaraju is saying it sounds okay. So I guess that is what we will do. We'll do the quiz now and then we will talk about the quiz now. And then we can go for lunch and we come back from lunch and talk about rubrics. Okay, so let me share the quiz link with everyone.
So you can see the quiz link here. Uh, I have posted it in the chat window. I have also posted the quiz link in the WhatsApp group. Uh, please go to the quiz and complete the quiz. We have about 10 to 15 minutes to complete the quiz, and then we'll have a discussion on the quiz questions, and then we'll go for lunch. Also, please do not worry about the score that you are getting on the quiz. It doesn't matter what score you are getting on the quiz. This is a quiz for your own understanding of the concepts of outcome based education. So please do not worry about what score you are getting on the quiz. So Ranju is asking how the attendance will be marked. The answer to that question is that AICT has a system uh, that marks the attendance and that attendance is marked through when you log in to the WebEx, it automatically gets recorded. So we at Meter Chennai are not marking your attendance at all. But I do want people to respond to the quiz. And I have get I have gotten no response as of now. So please do the quiz. As I said earlier, the quiz does not count for your certificate. The amount of the number of points you get on the quiz does not count for whether you get the certificate or not, whether you pass or not. But we do want you to complete the quiz. It's a requirement for you to complete the quiz. Can anyone confirm if you can see the quiz? Because I do not see anyone has responded. The quiz is pretty simple. It should be quickly done. And I can't see anyone responding. So I'm not sure if you're able to access the quiz. Okay, it does seem like people are people should be able to access the quiz. Yeah.
Rajesh is asking, can I can I send the WhatsApp link again? Which is not important for now. Please go to the quiz first. Please complete the quiz. So oh, I have responses coming in. Great. Remember, the sooner we complete the quiz, the sooner we can go for lunch. So completing the quiz sooner is good. <laughs> Just want to let people know that completing the quiz sooner is good. I do have six responses now, which is great. This is the link of the quiz that you have to go to. I have 15 responses so far. Uh, let's have a little bit more time and have more responses.
Okay, we will start talking about this in two minutes. So I want everyone to finish doing the quiz in two minutes. And I see that people have actually, like nobody else is uh, doing the quiz anymore. So I'll give you a minute more and then we'll start talking about the responses to the quiz. Okay, so let us get started. I have a total of 27 responses. Uh, first of all, before I get started, I do want to ask people what you thought of the difficulty level of the quiz. Do you think the quiz was easy, difficult? Oh, Rohit is saying it was very easy. Anyone else? Okay. So it was average, uh, someone saying it was moderate. Okay, so different kinds of <laughs> uh, difficulty levels uh, are being perceived by people, which is good. Uh, I just want to reiterate the amount, the number of points that you have gotten on the quiz do not matter. What matters is that everyone has to complete the quiz. You have to complete the quiz regardless of what score you get. That is what is of importance. Now let us look at the scores. Uh, like not the scores, but the correct responses. I just want to let people know that the average on this quiz was 12.5. So it was a moderately difficult quiz, I would say. The average was 12.5. Uh, let me share my screen. I don't know what you are able to see here. Can any everyone see the quiz window? Can everyone see the quiz window? I don't know what which screen is actually being shared. Uh, can you see the quiz window? Yes, okay. So the first question on the quiz was, uh, which of the following treaties has led India to adopting the outcome-based education framework? The correct answer for that is Washington Accord. So you had a session on outcome-based education yesterday by Dr. Giri Dharan, and I don't know if he talked about this or not, but essentially around 1980s and 90s, there was a huge global mobility of engineers, right? So engineers will get degrees in one country and then they would move to another country to get a job or they would move to another country for higher education. Now, one of the challenges that people started facing with this kind of movement of engineers was how can one compare an engineering degree obtained in one country with the one that is obtained in another country? And how does one ensure that the qualifications that engineers need are still similar or, or, or the engineers graduating with an engineering degree from different countries still have the same kind of qualification regardless of where they completed their degree. And this was a real problem. So they came up with something called the Washington Accord, which 
aimed for equivalence in degrees, which aimed for equivalence in degrees across countries. Now, Washington Accord initially was based on inputs, the course activities and what happened in the degrees. But over time, in around 2000, they came up with the outcome-based model or the engineering criteria, which laid framework for the outcome-based education. So Washington Accord is the correct answer. Washington Accord has led to India adopting outcome-based education framework. The second question is, uh, let me actually also increase the font size because some people might be having difficulty. Okay, is it clearly visible now? Can people see the uh, window clearly? Is my window clearly visible? Okay, and you can see the question. Can, can people see the screen and the question that is there? Can I get a response? Yes, okay. Now the second question was about 50% of the people gave uh, the answers, answer to this question correctly. In an outcome-based education framework, which of the following needs to be clearly defined? And the correct answer is the educational outcome of the program, right? You don't, you have a lot of flexibility about course topics. You have a lot of flexibility about course activities. What needs to be clearly defined is the educational outcome of the program in an outcome based educational education framework. The next question, which a lot of people, about 60% of people have gotten correct, which was what is the meaning of graduate attributes? And what it means is that the abilities the abilities that graduates of an engineering undergraduate program or any undergraduate program should have. People who have finished the three or four year degree, the attributes, the abilities that they have after finishing those three or four years of the degree is what is referred to as graduate attributes. The next question was, which are the two steps that bring clarity and specificity to program outcomes? What are the two steps that bring clarity and specificity to program outcomes? Now, one of the things that is there with program outcomes are that if you look at the educational program outcomes for uh, any degree, they are very broad, right? They are very broad. They are not specific. So in order to bring them down to the course level and design question papers based on that, in order to bring down the program outcomes to the course level and design question papers based on that, what we need to do is to bring some clarity, right? Bring some specificity to these program outcomes because these are very broad, very general at the program level, right? So what we do is then we try to identify competencies from those program outcomes. And once we have identified competencies from those program outcomes, what we do is we define performance indicators for students and performance indicators are the ones that are used to measure student performances, right? So these are the two steps that bring clarity and specificity to program outcomes in a program. The next question was which of the following can be measured through assessment process? Uh, the correct answer to that is performance indicators because graduate attributes are very broad, program outcomes are very broad, competencies are also broader than performance indicators and performance indicators are the ones that are measured. The next question is which of the following assessment components have the largest weightage in overall grading system and in the higher education system? More than 85% of you got it correct? Yes. We are, as a country, very, very exam-based education regime. Like, there's exam for everything. There's exam for almost everything that you can think of. And hence, examinations have the highest weightage in our grading system in India. The next question is teaching and learning activities, assessment and other curricular features should be designed for students to meet the learning outcomes at which level? Uh, again, as I said earlier, program level is very broad. Uh, things are designed at course level, at the course level, teaching and learning activities, 
assessment activities, they are all designed to help students meet the learning outcome at the course level. The next question is, which of the following need to be tested through assessment process? Uh, recall of factual information, ability to apply knowledge, synthesize and design, professional skills such as communication, teamwork and global competence and all of the above. The actual answer is all of them need to be tested through an assessment process because they all form different levels of Bloom's taxonomy and we need to teach students, we need to impart skills to students on all levels of Bloom's taxonomy and hence it is important and hence it is important that we measure or assess student learning on all the levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, the next question is, which of the following statements is true? Uh, and it says examinations are the most important means of assessment. That is actually incorrect. Examiners, examinations are widely used, but they are not the most important means of assessment. Uh, the second option was examinations are the only reliable means of assessment. That is again not true. There are other reliable means of assessment. And to be honest, the reliability of examinations can also be questioned and has been questioned by many people who work in the area of assessment, pedagogy, teaching and learning. Uh, the next one was there should be at least three examinations in a semester. That is also not true. What is actually true is we should use a wide range of assessment methods. We should use a wide range of assessment methods in a course to help students uh, exhibit their learning through different methods because some students are good at exhibiting learning in one way. Some students are good at exhibiting learning in a different way. And hence we should use a wide range of assessment methods in a course to help students exhibit their learning in diverse set of ways. The next question is, which of the following is advised to improve the quality of assessment, assessment planning, action works for assessment, Bloom's taxonomy for assessment of cognitive levels. And the next one was all of the work. Actually, all of them is advised. You have to plan your assessment. You should use action works for assessment. So you learned about how to write program out, uh, course outcomes yesterday, and you must have learned that you should write clearly measurable action verbs. Use uh, clearly measurable action verbs when you're writing uh, outcomes. And you should use Bloom's taxonomy for assessment of cognitive levels. That is something that Dr. Sanmuganidhi must have talked about a bit ago. So these are the questions that you answered. These are the answers to the questions. What I'm going to do is to stop presenting. And after that, I'm going to wait a little bit to see if you have any question, and then we can break for lunch. Any question at this point of time? Any question? Any question that I can answer for you people?
we will rejoin by 1:30 pm that is correct we will again rejoin by 1:30 pm so this finishes our session i do not see any question coming in we are going to break for lunch and we will join again by 1:30 pm
Hello. Am I audible? Can people hear me? Yes, okay, so let's get started. In this session, we want to talk about rubrics, uh, but before I jump on to talking about rubrics, I do want to ask people if you have any question about the quiz or anything that we have covered so far. Any question about the quiz or the topics that we have covered so far? Yes, that is a good question. How and where we submit the question paper? Once I finish the session on rubrics, I will talk about how to submit the question paper and where to submit the question paper. Uh, you do need to be on Google Classroom. You do need to have joined the Google Classroom to be able to submit the question paper. If you have not joined the Google Classroom, you will not be able to submit the question paper. So that's condition number one. Uh, and then once you've joined the Google Classroom, we'll talk about how to submit the question paper and what template to use when you submit the question paper. So that is something that we will talk about, Manish. Any other question? Okay, so let us get started then. Uh, in this session, we want to talk about rubrics. The goal is to finish rubrics by 2.15. Uh, if not earlier, and then we can quickly talk about how and where to submit the question paper. And then, uh, and then uh, once we finish talking about the rubrics, we will talk about how and where to submit the question paper. So let me share my slides. Okay, I guess my slides are visible to everyone. Yes, okay. Okay, so welcome to this afternoon session where we will talk about the design of rubrics. Uh, it's a very simple and straightforward thing to design and use rubrics in your classes. However, a lot of times people do not know what rubrics are or how to use rubrics and things like that. So we'll talk about a little bit of that. But before I get to it, I do want to ask the audience if people have any experience of either designing the rubric or using rubric in the past. So you can use the chat window to answer this question. Do you have any experience of designing or using rubrics? Okay, Dinesh is saying we have used uh, designed rubric for seminar assessment. That is good. So someone has an, has an experience of designing rubric. Any anything else? Anyone else? Do you have any experience of designing or using rubrics? If you don't have any experience of designing or using rubric, that is fine. But I do want to know if you have any experience in that regard. Okay. So before we actually get started with talking about how to design rubrics, I do want everyone to look at this question. Uh, Dr. Jatav taught a course on solar PV system design using a problem-based learning approach. So there's a professor who is teaching a course or taught a course on solar PV design using PBL, using problem-based learning. To assess student learning, they gave the students a final exam to be completed within two hours. 
So the students were given a final exam to be done within two hours. The exam tested students on different aspects of the design of a solar PV system, including equipment specification for installing a PV system using MCQs. Right. So what the professor did was to give students an MCQ type exam at the end of the course. The course was taught using problem based learning and this exam tested students on different aspects of the design of a solar PV system. Now, what you need to think about and answer in the chat window is whether, in your opinion, this assessment is appropriate or not. So what you need to answer is, do you think this assessment is appropriate? And if you think it is appropriate, you have to say why. You think if it's not appropriate, you have to say why. So please use the chat window to answer this question. So Bharati is saying it's no. Uh, for, so please use the chat window to answer the question if that assessment is appropriate or no, not. Payal is saying no. Dinesh is saying it was appropriate in the sense that the steps of design were examined. Now, for those of you who are saying yes or no without giving a reason, I don't think you read the question correctly. If you are in a session on exam reforms, you have to read the question correctly. The question said, do you think the assessment is appropriate? Why or why not? You also have to provide a reason. And now everyone has stopped responding. Because that was the difficult part. Saying yes or no to a question is very easy. But why do you think it's a good, uh, appropriate way of assessing? Why do you think it's not an appropriate way of assessing? Think about it and answer the question. I'm going to put the question in the chat window. This is the situation. And this is the question. Rohit is saying assessment is appropriate. Rohit, I just said you have to also give an answer to why do you think it's appropriate. Okay, so Manish is saying, so giving some answer. Dilip is saying, Dinesh is saying, but it was not appropriate in the sense that students could not be able to judge the method to dis the method to discuss to improve. I don't know what that means. The design of rubrics. That is not the question, the way. Uh, the question is. Nitin Anand is saying assessment is appropriate because, but not sufficient because students must be assessed midway also to strengthen their understanding. Well, we are not talking about whether they were assessed midway or not. All that the question is saying is in this point when the final exam was given using MCQ, is that method of assessment is appropriate or not? Right, and there are some people, for example, Muhammad Iqbal is saying that the aspect of design cannot be explained in MCQ. Same, Manish is also saying the same thing. The design side probably cannot be assessed using MCQ, which is the correct answer, right? Usually what happens is when you are designing something, there's a lot more, there's a lot more 
that goes on in addition to just remembering and recalling and applying a formula and getting to the right answer. There are a lot more things that are included in designing something. And it is difficult to actually assess all of those things using an MCQ. So it's actually difficult to assess using MCQ. Nitin is also saying higher levels may not be able to assess, may not be assessed using MCQ, which is actually a correct response. So now let's look at why that is the case, right? So we all have kind of, most of us have at least agreed that you cannot use MCQ to assess design learning of students. You cannot use MCQs to assess a course that was based on design of something. So we all agree to that at least. Now the next question then is, why is that the case? So why does it so happen that one cannot assess using MCQ the design aspects of a course. Why is that the case? So let me share my slides again. So now, if you look at the whole concept of problem solving and how problem solving happens, you will see if we look at the different steps, it starts off with understanding the key features of the problem. So the first thing that you want to do while you're solving a problem is to understand what are the key features? What is it that you have to do? What are the resources that you have to use uh, or you can use? What are the things that you don't have available? So this particular course was on the design of PV system. So now I think about designing a PV system. There are multiple things, right? So you can think about if there is enough space, where is the space located? Is it going to be on the rooftop? Is it going to be on the ground? Is it going to be uh, affected by rain when it falls, like when rain falls, will dirt also come on the surface of the PV panels, right? How much area is available to you, right? Is there a lot of area that is available to you? So there are multiple questions like this that one has to think about. And then, so that is the design aspect, understanding the constraints available. The other aspect is to think about, okay, if a solar, solar PV system is to be designed for a house, is it going to be a standalone system? As in, <clears throat> if this system is the only thing that is going to supply electricity to the house, or is it going to be integrated with the electric supply, right? Where it acts as a buffer, right? And that's where the design aspects will start differing. So you have to understand the key features of the problem. And once you have figured out, okay, it's not going to be a standalone thing, or it's going to be a standalone thing, you have to think about how big the house is, what is the electricity requirement, of that particular house for which you are designing a solar PV system. So that's the first step. You have to understand the key features of a problem. The next step is then to apply, the next step is to apply disciplinary knowledge, the knowledge from your discipline in which you are solving the problem. So if it's in this particular case, it's electrical engineering, energy engineering. So you have to apply the disciplinary knowledge to generate different solutions. Now different solutions can be PV panels can be of different size, PV panels can be of different materials, they can have different kinds of tilt and things like that, right? So you have to apply disciplinary knowledge to generate different kinds of solutions. Now, once you have come up with two or three or four solutions, the next step is to analyze and evaluate the different solutions. So all the different solutions that you have, you have to analyze and evaluate those solutions. And then how do you evaluate them? You look at some evidence, you see which one is working the best, maybe you build a prototype, you build two or three prototypes and see which one works the best. Then you have to have some evidence to decide which out of the different options that you created in terms of solving that problem can work. The next step is then to pick one solution that you think is the most appropriate. So then you pick the most appropriate solution then you monitor and evaluate the implementation of the solution to check if the solution is on the right track. So the next step is once you have chosen the most appropriate solution, once you have chosen the most appropriate solution, what you need to do is to monitor the different, the solution that you have 
chosen to be implemented and evaluate the solution that you have chosen to be implemented to see if the solution is on the right track. Is it doing what it has to do? Is it doing what you designed it to do? And once you have some level of satisfaction with it, then you communicate your decisions to stakeholders. But if you don't have an appropriate level of satisfaction with it, you think that there needs to be more that is required to be done, then you go back to your solution and you modify it. So if we look at the key words, what are the key words? Understanding the key features of the problem, applying, analyzing, evaluating, monitoring, communicating. So these are the key words that are involved in solving a problem. So in a problem solving, problem based learning environment, students do all of this. And the question then becomes whether MCQs are the best way to assess student and stand and students capabilities in terms of applying knowledge, analyzing different solutions, evaluating the solutions, monitoring the implementation of solutions and communicating the solution to stakeholders. So that is what the question that we now need to think about or answer. To answer this, I would like you to bring your attention to Bloom's taxonomy, the revised Bloom taxonomy about cognitive skills. Now, if we start looking at it, we see remembering is at the bottom level, right? Understanding is at the level above that, applying is at the level above that, analyzing is even more, evaluating and creating. So, and then actually <clears throat> designing a solution to a problem is basically creating something. So that's like at the highest level. And there are some steps as we talked about that are at the lower levels of Bloom's taxonomy in problem solving. Now what happens is when you look at the ways in which one can assess this, these things, one can easily assess remembering through an exam. You just ask them, oh, do you remember this? Do you remember that? Do you remember that formula? And all of that can be done in an examination hall. Understanding can also be fairly measured through examinations and continuous internal assessments. And so can be applying and to some extent analyzing can also be right. But when it comes to evaluating a, a solution or evaluating different solutions for their merits and demerits or creating a new solution, a new product, one cannot really assess them. One cannot really assess them using examination. And these can only be assessed using either course projects or mini projects or minor projects or capstone projects and things like that. So are different ways in which the levels, the upper levels of Bloom's taxonomy can be assessed are through projects, right? And not through exams. And now going back to this problem where it was a problem-based learning course where students actually engage in projects, right? It was a pro problem-based learning course where students actually engage in projects. And in this, course, what the teacher or the professor is doing is asking students to use MCQs or, or solve MCQ questions in an exam so that they can be awarded final grade, right? Which is a contradiction based on this diagram that we just saw, right? If it's an upper level of Bloom's taxonomy, you can't really use exams to measure those skills, to measure those competencies. And here the professor is doing exactly that. So this does not seem like an appropriate way of assessing student learning. Any question at this point of time? Any question that I about what I just talked about? Any question on that? Okay.
Dinesh is asking in machine design course, most of the questions start with design word. So if students have to actually design a prototype or design a model or design different parts of a machine, you can assume them to be in upper level. Okay, so now this problem of how to assess students if they are trying to gain competencies in the upper levels of Bloom's taxonomy poses the problem, if not exams, then what, right? And the question can be answered by saying, if not exams, then? Uh, Dinesh is saying my voice is not coming. That is not, uh, can others hear me? Because I'm not muted. Can others hear me? Yes, okay, Mohammed Iqbal is saying that others, I, they can hear me. So, Dinesh, there might be a problem. Dinesh, Dinesh, there might be a problem uh, at your end. I'm sorry. Can you see if your system is working correctly? Okay. So, then, as I was saying, it, it leads us to the question then that if not exams, then what? And the answer to that question, as I showed on one of the slides, is that we have to do projects. Now, how do we assess student learning that is about creating, evaluating, analyzing these things in a project-based or problem-based scenario? The answer to that is by using rubrics. So what we will do now is we will try to create a rubric and I'll show you how to create a rubric. And obviously I'll be using rubric creation. I'll be creating a rubric for, let's say this particular situation where a PV panel is being designed. However, rubrics can be created for pretty much all the disciplines and all the kinds of applications and courses that you are teaching. So I'll give an example of a design problem for rubric. And after that, uh, I will be open to take questions and we will talk about how to submit the question paper that you are going to discuss tomorrow. All right. <clears throat> so let me share my slide once again. All right, so as you can see on my slide, As you can see on my slide, this is what a rubric looks like. It basically just looks like a table. Now, if you can look at the left most column or the first column of this rubric, you will see there is something called performance criterion written on in all the boxes except the first one. Similarly, if you look at the first row, it has different scales, that is scale one, scale two, scale three, and scale four written over there. So this is what a rubric looks like. It has performance criterion written on it, and it has scales of measurements written on the rows. And each of the scale represents a certain level. So scale one is excellent in this case, scale two is good, very good, scale three is satisfactory, scale four is poor. Now people can use three point scale, people can use five point scale, I usually tell people not to use more than five points because then it becomes very complicated. It becomes very complicated to use the rubric to grade students. So more than five points is a little bit of a challenge. So try to avoid using that. Um, so now what are performance criteria? Performance criteria are the competencies that you want students to attain. So for example, in the case of design of a PP system, the competencies can be formulating the problem. The competencies can be 
communicating the solution. The competencies can be collecting sufficient amount of data. Competency can be analyzing data in an appropriate way. So it can be any set of competencies that you want to measure. So that goes in the performance criterion. You have excellent, uh, good, very good, satisfactory and poor four levels through which you are measuring these competencies. So you describe what excellent performance in data collection looks like. So what would you say is excellent data collection, right? What did you say is very good data collection? What did you say is satisfactory data collection? What did you say is poor data collection? And you have to fill these boxes, all these boxes for different performance criteria. So this is what a basic layout of a rubric is. What we will do is now we'll go to Ruby start and try to create an actual rubric. So for those of you who have not used or created rubrics before, uh, you can use this website. This is a good website for the beginners. So I'm going to put the website link in the chat window. And I would also, I mean, if you have a computer right now, you can actually go to this website right now and start playing with it. Otherwise, uh, you can just look at my screen because I'm going to share my screen and you can follow the screen too. Okay, so when you go to this website, the Ruby star website, this is what it will look like. So this is what this website looks like. Now what we want to do is uh, to say, we want to create a rubric based on a particular topic. And there are different options here, oral projects, multimedia, math, writing, products, music, science, work, art, reading. So there are different options here. We want to choose science because it is the design of a solar PV system. Right, now under the science category, you have four different options. Do you want to create a rubric about building a structure? Do you want to create a rubric about a lab report? Do you want to create a rubric about a science fair experiment or, a, or scientific drawings? So I want to say that I am going to create a rubric about building a structure because I can equate building a structure to building a solar PV system. So let me go to building a structure. Now, once you go here, they will ask you for a few things, right? So they will ask your name, they'll ask for your last name, and then they will ask for what your project name is. You can just say building a structure, design of a solar PV system. Okay, so this is what your rubric is about. Now it is asking you to put your zip code uh, if you're in the US, and if you're not in the US, you can just put 99999, right? And then the next thing it asks is, is it a temporary rubric or permanent rubric? So I say I want to create a temporary rubric, not a permanent one. And then this is where you actually start creating the rubric. So if you see this, this is where you start creating the rubric. So I said there are different performance indicators and scales of measurement. In this case, what they have done is, they have chosen four scales of measurement. One, two, three, four. So there are four scales of measurement that they have chosen. Now, after this, after this, what you have to then do is to choose a performance criterion. So there are multiple performance criterion. There are multiple performance criterion that are there. So I want to first start off with information gathering right but i want to let's say start with scientific knowledge i want to see if students have enough scientific knowledge when they are designing the solar PV system so once i choose this performance criterion there are four categories of or four levels of performance indicators are automatically populated 
So it says the excellent level means explanation by all group members indicate a clear and accurate understanding of scientific principles underlying the construction and modification. The very good level is explanations by all group members indicate a relatively accurate understanding of scientific principles underlying the construction and modifications. The good level is explanations by most group members indicate a relatively accurate understanding of scientific principles underlying the construction modifications and the poor level is explanations by several members of the group do not illustrate how much understanding of scientific principles underlying uh, underlying the construction and modifications so these are the four scales of measurement for the performance criterion or performance uh, uh, criterion called scientific knowledge Okay, now we want to choose the second one. So let's see, I want to choose information gathering. So how did the students gather information to design the solar PV? So they take, took information from several sources in a systematic manner or a few sources in a systematic manner, a few sources, but not in a systematic manner or very little sources, one source or the information is not accurate, right? So that's another performance criterion. Similarly, you can use other performance criterion such as data collection, uh, and then it kind of populates it as well. And then you can say construction materials. So if the next one can be construction materials, and then you might say, okay, fine, I can use all of this, but what if I about what about a situation where I want to create my own criterion? Because it doesn't say data analysis, right? This one doesn't say data analysis, or this one doesn't say, let's say, sturdiness of the structure, right? And I want to create, I want to create a criterion that is about sturdiness or robustness or strength. So you can actually create that. So you can create your own criterion instead of choosing one from this drop down box, you can just write it here and you have to explain what excellent means for strength of, of solar. Similarly, you have to explain and I'm not explaining it here, but if you want to create a new criterion, this is what you can do. What very good So this is what this is how you can create a criterion of your own. You can create more than one criteria as well. So now what you need to do is to go here and submit. This is your rubric ready to be used. So rubric on building a structure, design of a solar PV system, and your uh, and then your Categories are scientific knowledge, information gathering, data collection, construction materials, and strength. So these are your categories. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Once you have made a rubric, you need to give that to the students because that is what your students will be using to, oops. Sorry about this. So once you have created a rubric, you need to give it to your students because this is what your students will be using.
this is what your students will be using to design the solar PV system and write a report. This will guide them on how to appropriately design the solar PV system and write the report. So it's very, very important that you give it to your students. Now, next question that can be asked by someone is fine. I have created this rubric. How do I, I have created this rubric. How do I, use this rubric, right? Once I've created this rubric, how do I use this rubric? So the way one can use this rubric is, now you have a student work, maybe a report or presentation or design, whatever it is, you have that in front of you. And now you want to start scoring this rubric, right? And the way you do that is, so you look at the scientific knowledge that is depicted in that report or presentation or material, and you say, oh, this looks very good. So you start, you score it here, you, right? Oops. So you say this looks very good. So this is the score that the student go, gets on scientific knowledge. Similarly, if you look at information gathering, you say this doesn't look that good. This is okay, I'll give it a good. So this is the, what student gets on information gathering. The next one is data collection. You say this is excellent. I'm going to give student a full on this. Now the next, is construction materials, you say this is also excellent. I'm going to give students a full on this. And then the next one is uh, strength. You say this is good. I'm going to give students a very good on this, right? So this is the score that students have. Now this adds up to four plus four plus three plus three plus two, which is equal to 16. What are the full marks? The full marks was? 20. So the student has gotten 20 out of, sorry, 16 out of 20. So this is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is uh, you actually say, no, I'm not going to do this. What I'm going to do is to assign weight, right? So instead of each of them having four marks each, I'm going to do a little bit of weighted thing where I'm going to assign eight marks to scientific knowledge. Sixteen marks to information gathering. Twelve marks to this. Twenty-four marks this and twenty marks to this. So that adds up to forty-four fifty-six. 80. So that is full marks of 80. So you don't want to make it like earlier where, so this is your full marks where everything was equally weighted. You want to do diversification in terms of how things are being weighted. Now you are saying that the student got this for scientific knowledge, this for information gathering, this for data collection, this for construction materials, and this for strength. So this means that student got 20 here, 12 here, 18 here, because full marks is 24. So this means 24 in case of excellent, 18 in case of very good, 12 in case of good, and six in case of poor. I'm just dividing them equally. And here the student gets an eight, and here the student gets a six. So that adds up to 30, 50, 64 upon 80. So you can do something like this as well. Now, both of these are an okay way of going about it. It's up to you. Usually people prefer the second one, the one that I just talked about, where different weights are assigned to different categories or different performance indicators in a rubric. So this finishes my conversation on how to design rubric, why to design rubric. Uh, I want to now open the floor for the audience to ask questions. Please do let me know if you have any question about rubrics.
Any question that I can answer about rubrics? Okay, I'm not hearing any question. I'm not seeing any question coming in the chat window. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds just in case somebody has a question. And if you do not have any question, I'm going to uh, jump on to talking about how to submit the question paper for tomorrow. Okay, now in terms of submitting the question paper for tomorrow, now remember one of the requirements for you to get the completion certificate from AICT is that you have to submit a model question paper. Now, once someone asked me earlier how to submit and where to submit a model question paper. So you need to be on Google Classroom for that. I had given you the course code for Google Classroom. You also need to register for this course uh, using the registration link. So if you have not done registration or you're not on Google Classroom, I'm going to give you these details again so that you can register or you can go to Google Classroom. So this is the registration link. And I'll give you the course code for Google Classroom. For registration and Google Classroom both, please use your personal Gmail ID. Sometimes it creates problem if you have institutional Gmail ID. And please make sure that you use the same Gmail ID for course registration and Google Classroom. We do not use different email IDs for course registration and Google Classroom. So this is something to be kept in mind. Now, once you have joined the Google Classroom, I'm going to share my screen again so that others can see. So once you've joined Google Classroom, this is what your classwork tab will look like. So once you go to the classroom, classwork tab, you'll all, already see a model question paper assignment created. And this model question paper is due tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. That is the start of our session. So when you click on that, 
it will give you an option to submit the model question paper if you are a student but for me i want to just see what the template is because i want to talk to you about what the template is so this is the template in which you have to submit the paper model question paper you have to write the course name full marks exam duration and then you have to create two different kinds of questions mcq questions and long answer questions if you have mcq questions you have to like this is an easy peasy table we have to write the serial number for the questions the question which of the four options go in each of the so for the mcq what is option a what is option b what is option c what is option d so you have to provide four options you have to also give a correct option and you have to say which course outcome this particular question refers to so you have to do that for each of the questions and you have to indicate which bloom's taxonomy level that particular question relates to and how many marks is that question worth so that is what the template for mcq questions will be for long answer questions you have to provide serial number for the questions you have to write the question you have to provide the answer you have to relate it relate the question each of the questions to the course outcome that it addresses and then and then you have to talk about which blooms level that particular question relates to and what marks that question carries now if you have used codes if you have used codes from for blooms level so sometimes people just say u for understanding a for analyzing e for evaluating so if that is what you use in your table you have to provide a legend below uh, or if you have used the course outcome this for example c1 c2 c3 you have to provide a legend indicating what c1 c2 c3 and these different codes mean so that is what you have to keep in mind when you are doing this and you need to submit this model question paper by 10 30 am tomorrow any question at this point of time how many questions in each part i would say like if it's a 50 mark exam just think of what's an appropriate number of questions what is an appropriate marking scheme for all the questions? It, it can be a 50 mark exam, it can be a 20 mark exam, it can be a 100 mark exam. That doesn't matter. The idea is for you to practice this so that, I mean, you have learned something about setting up question papers in the last two days, right? So this is for you to practice a little bit of the learning that you had, right? You can also use a question paper that you had given last year, just categorize it into these categories. Just put the different questions into these categories. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Just want to see if there's any other question. Any other question that I can answer for the audience? So I'm going to wait for one more minute. Okay, how to upload the model question paper through the Google Classroom? Yes, just Google Classroom. If you go to that particular assignment link, you will get an option to submit. You have to use that submission option and upload your question paper. Please do not email me the question paper. That doesn't count. If you do not upload it on Google Classroom, it does not count. Okay, Girish Chandra is saying I'm from pharmacy, so what is the problem in pharmacy? You can still upload a question paper, no issues. For long answer type questions, do we need to provide complete answer? Yes, try to provide complete answer. If you cannot provide complete answer, provide an outline of what the answer could be. Yes, yes, Girish Chandra, please prepare a question paper in that format, in the one that I just showed. It's there on Google Classroom as well. If you go to the assignment tab, you can be uh, you can uh, download uh, that particular format. You can view that format and download that format. If you go to, so Dasari Nagaraj is asking how it is not available. Uh, there is a template that is available. Please go to Google Classroom. If you go to Google Classroom under Classwork tab, there is a template that is available. I already have one person submitting. I already have one person submitted. So 
there is definitely there is definitely template available there i can see the template i can also see an option for people to upload your question paper the key thing is to follow the template the key thing is to follow the template i'm repeating please do not submit anything that comes to your mind please follow the template the sorry the next step is to design a question paper or use a question paper from earlier make it fit into the template and submit it I, others have there, there's already a submission that has happened please go to that google classroom assignment you should be able to see the submission option Okay, any other question that I can answer at this point of time? When you click on that assignment, it will lead to a submission option. Okay, I do not see any question coming in. So I guess there is no more question that needs to be answered. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all tomorrow at 1030. We will talk about the question papers that you have submitted. We'll have a discussion of the question papers that you have submitted. Uh, and, and we'll give you feedback on how to make those questions paper, question papers better. And if they're already good, we'll tell you that. Rohit is asking, can you upload the PPTs on Google Classroom? Uh, Sure, I can upload the PPTs on Google Classroom. I cannot sure whether others can upload the PPTs on Google Classroom. Uh, for example, Dr. Sanmuganidhi, I don't know if he wants to share his PPT. If that doesn't happen, you can always go to the live streaming that is done by AICT and you can refer to those YouTube videos to look at the slides. There's no issue in that. All right, so any any other question? Okay, I don't see any question coming in, so I'm going to end the session. Thank you so much for being here. Have a good rest of the afternoon and a good evening. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.